Alright, so today we're going to be talking a little bit about cryptography. Cryptography is the study or the science of encrypting and decrypting messages. So when I think about this, I typically think about two groups of people that want to communicate. So for instance, in war times, if two different uh, groups of the same uh, military are wanting to communicate, but they're far away, then they're going to send messages to each other. But the thing is that these two groups don't necessarily want a third party to figure out what they're saying. So what they're going to do then is they're going to take the message that they want to say. So for example, if these are two war groups and they want to move north, then that first group that wants to tell the other group, hey, we need to move north, is going to encrypt that message. They're going to make it into something that doesn't make any sense anymore. So it's just going to be some type of gobbledygook. And there has to be a way to actually do that. So cryptography is the study of how you do that. It's the study or the science of encrypting and decrypting messages. The idea is always that you're going to start with some original message, like go north. And then you're going to encrypt it. Encrypt it means you're going to take that message that actually makes sense and make it into something that doesn't make sense. when someone looks at it, they can't tell that it says go north anymore. And decryption, so now when that second group gets it, so the first group says go north, they encrypt it, no longer makes any sense, they send it over to the second party, the second party looks at it and they go, oh, what does this say? And then the idea is that they're going to look at it and decrypt it. They're going to actually make it make sense again. They're going to bring back the original message. So now that they're going to see that it says go north, great, they know to actually go north. The idea is that if a third party intercepts the message, they get a hold of it and they look at it, they shouldn't be able to figure out what it says. And hopefully they wouldn't be able to decrypt the message and figure out what it says. So that third party has no idea. Now this study of cryptography has been going on for a very long time. And the cryptography, uh, the things that we're going to be looking at are much older, and so when people actually see these, you could just Google it and figure out what something says. If you get something that doesn't make any sense, Google it, and Google will say, oh, it's probably, they probably use this cipher, and then tell you exactly what the original message was. On the other hand, this cryptography still exists today. Uh, it's just a lot more complicated. But the ones that we look at kind of give us a start into to feeling what it's like to, to use cryptography. So when you're encrypting and decrypting, an encryption method and a decryption method come together in what's called the crypto system. And the crypto system is basically a method for encrypting and decrypting. So the encryption decryption method that we're going to start out with is called the Caesar cipher. We will be looking at more ciphers, but this first one is kind of a nice place to start. The Caesar cipher is a way of encrypting and decrypting messages. The way that the Caesar cipher works is it encrypts by moving each letter from the original message three further into the alphabet. So, you replace letters in the original message with letters that are three further into the alphabet. In other words, you're shifting the letters over.
To encrypt, you go further into the alphabet. To decrypt, you go backwards. So encrypt, shift forward, decrypt, shift back. And that's the Caesar cipher. So to figure out how to encrypt something, let's take a look at an example. So we're going to encrypt, let's say, let's encrypt video. So the way that I'm going to do this then is I'm going to think about the alphabet. And so, for example, V should go three letters into the future. V, W, X, Y. So V turns into Y. I, J, K, L. So I turns into L. D, E, F, G. So D turns into G. E, F, G, H. So E turns into H. And O, P, Q, R. So O turns into R. So this right here is called the original message. And this right here is the encrypted form. So if you want to tell someone that you're watching a video, because you are, then you should say that you're watching a YLGHR. And then that's the encrypted form, then they can decrypt it and try to figure out what you're watching. Well, if they want to decrypt it, they just have to go backwards. So they take Y, and they go three letters back into the alphabet, and they get V. They take L, they go three back, and they get I. G goes back to D, H goes back to E, and R goes back to O. In fact, to kind of see that, let me put out the alphabet. So if you take Y and go back three letters, you get X, W, V, so there's the V. If you were to decrypt L, you would go back 1, 2, 3 to I. G goes back 1, 2, 3 to D. H goes back 1, 2, 3 to E. And R goes back 1, 2, 3 to O. So video encrypts to Y, L, G, H, R, but decrypts to video, and that's the idea that they're able to actually recover the original message. Let's try another one. So decrypt this. So let's decrypt, let's say, P, R, Y, L, H. Let's see what this says. Um, so P goes back to 1, 2, 3, M. R goes back to 1, 2, 3, O. Y goes back to 1, 2, 3, V. L goes back to 1, 2, 3, I. And H goes back to 1, 2, 3, E. So it decrypts to movie. Now, the 3 is not really all that special. Originally, the Caesar cipher used a shift of 3, but we could shift with any number. So if we want to move forward or backward, any number, we just call that a shift. So for example, we could shift with 5, and what I'm going to do then is kind of switch to a different way to talk about this. So when we shift, we could go up by 5, we go forward 5, backwards 5 to decrypt. And one of the ways to do this is to get numbers associated to each letter. So I'm going to associate a number. I'm going to start with 0 for A. 1 would be, 2 would be C, 3. Now there are 26 letters of the alphabet, but because they start with 0, I'll end with 25. So I could shift with any shift. Let's encrypt with 
shift, let's say, 7. And let's encrypt 0. Now, to encrypt, when you kind of have this association to numbers, to encrypt, you could just add the number, add the shift. And to decrypt, you would subtract the shift. So if I take zebra, I could find the numbers associated. Z is a 25. E is a 4. B is a 1. R is a 17. And A is a 0. Now to encrypt it, the shift to 7, I just add 7. So I'll add 7. So I get 32, 11, 8, 24, and 7. And so what ends up happening is, when I get these numbers, they each associate themselves to a, a letter. I'm going to start with the 11, though, because the 11 actually makes sense. The 32 doesn't yet. So 11 would be L, 8 would be I, 24 would be Y, and 7 would be H. But what about this 32? Well, let's look at what happens. Usually I count 7 into the future. But it's Z I'm at the end of the alphabet. So where should I go? Well, the most logical place to go is back to the beginning. So if I start with Z, back to the beginning, it would take me to A, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, which gives me G. So I'm actually going to get G for that. That's counting 32 into the alphabet. The problem is that G is a 6, not a 32. So how can I figure out how I get a 6? Well, notice that if I take 32 and subtract the number of letters in the alphabet, or 26, I get 6. So you can subtract 26. You can subtract 26 to get back into range, and range being between 0 and 25. Now why is this true? The reason it's true is because if I was to go and count to the 32nd letter of the alphabet, starting at 0, I would get 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up to 25 is Z. 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. But notice what happened. So first of all, 32 gave me G, which is what we expected. But when I said 26, it was back at A. In other words, starting at A at 0 and counting 26 in the future, I land back where I started. So in other words, I didn't really have to count out that full 26. And if I don't have to count out that full 26, then I could have just started at A and counted uh, up to 6. So if I just started here and counted up to 6, it would still give me 32. That 26 took me all the way back around. It's like going in the clock in time. If I go 12 hours in the future, the clock's going to look the same. So if I wanted to know what time it was in 17 hours, I don't really have to count the first 12 hours, I can just think one full revolution through the clock, back to where we're at right now, plus another 5 hours, and that would be 17 hours in the future. Same thing here, I don't have to count out the full 32, I could say 26, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, that leftover piece from when I subtract 26 from 32, and that would give me G. So you can always subtract 26 to get back into range. Likewise, you can add 26 to get back in a range. And this will show up if you're actually doing some type of decryption. So to end, let's decrypt. Let's do a shift of 4. And let's decrypt. Decrypt. And let's do a shift of 4. Let's do this one. Um, F. C. I. So what we would do again is we would get the numbers 5 for F, C would be 2, and I would be 8. We're decrypting, so we're going to subtract 4. Subtract 4, we get 1. Subtract 4, I get negative 2. Subtract 4, I get 4. Now I can add 26, and we get back in a range, so 1 is okay, but the negative 2 is not. Negative 2 plus 26 is 24, and 4. And that gives me B, Y, E. So this is Caesar cipher. And we'll be talking about the decimation cipher and the linear cipher in future videos. But for now, goodbye.